Irv, man, I don't want to do this shit. But Irv being a chatty patty right now, y'all. What do you think? I feel like there's a message somewhere buried deep. No, y'all ain't stopping him. That woman living rent free in that man's head, y'all. At the same time, I do want to pay my respects because you are hip hop royalty. I ain't even gonna hold you. That one's dumb. Rants with Aunt Dammit. Rants with Aunt Dammit. Listen, I'm all for people living their truth and speaking their truth. I ain't got a problem with that. Even if you got to embellish a little bit just to sell a story, I'm for that too. But let's be real. There's a fine line between telling your truth and just spilling the whole goddamn kettle. Irv Gotti is super entertaining, by the way. So I hate that this has to be him. But there's a message buried somewhere in here when it comes to hip hop. Like there's certain motherfuckers, they can tell a story. Irv is up there is definitely like top five best storytellers alive. My favorite Irv story is how Ja Rule's Thug Lovin' featuring Bobby Brown came to be. He, Irv was talking that talk. I said, yo. This was also back, you know, in the day when, you know, podcasting was great. Now, Irv was on Drink Chance with Ja Rule, and they were promoting the new Murder, Inc. doc on BET. I love a good doc, like, especially if it's a historical hip-hop doc based on around my era, and I was around to see it, like I was old enough to comprehend what's going on. I love that shit. So I'm tuning in for sure. But boy, this Drink Chance, this past one with Irv and Ja, that shit was a train wreck. And listen, Listen, I've I've sat through I've sat through tons of like crazy podcasts. Like I said, I'm from the 2015, 2016 podcast boom era where everybody was out here. They was just shooting. R.I.P. to Combat Jack. Make podcasts great again. It was uh it was some wild times and I I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I do see the progression and maturity in a lot of you podcasters, okay? The last time I felt this way about a podcast episode, especially a Drink Champs episode, was I think the last time they had Lamar Odom on here. Yikes. That one I was like, damn, didn't this motherfucker almost die in the whole house and y'all got him over here again? fucked up like this? I, yo, I couldn't believe it. I was like low-key offended for him, like straight up and down. I was like, damn, Noy, how you gonna do your man like that? But Lamar Odom's an adult, so I understand. I just, that podcast just didn't sit well with me. But that ain't got nothing to do with this. This episode was like almost three and a half hours of just drunk ranting. Irv was lit from the gate. I don't know. But I don't, th you know, he was gone. Soon as he sat down, he started talking his shit. And I was like, okay, Irv is here. Straight up and down this interview, he wasn't holding nothing back as, like, as far as working with certain execs, like at his time in the industry and even today and working with certain artists, like all of that. Irv was like, he ain't hold no punches. And he was really giving it up too. I was like, damn, this motherfucker is out here spilling it. Now, mind you, I've heard other stories, like this isn't his first time. So he was telling a whole nother round of stories like of truths i guess a lot of this is in the doc so if that the shit he was talking on drink champs is the same shit that's on the doc you know i'm tuning in i need to see it except the messy shit because it really it really got messy and i was like er even everybody there was like yo kind of chill but hey man listen there's a message buried somewhere in here <laughs> Right off the back though, I think like soon as they sat down and they passed out the bottles, Irv, or even before the bottles, Irv started talking about the watch that Ashanti gave him that he was wearing. And it was like engraved something on the back, like it was a beautiful moment, I guess. I don't know. Everybody thought it was cool. It was like, ah, cool. But then it just created this rabbit hole of Ashanti. I want that old thing back bitterness. It reeked of it. So it was no surprise when Nori brought up, you know, Ashanti on The Breakfast Club saying that she wanted her masters back or she wanted the stems because she was going to try to recreate some of the records. And Irv straight up said, no, I ain't giving it up. Like, no. And Irv said that standing on the platform of Yo, I wrote and produced these songs with her or without her, I don't know. But if he's claiming that he wrote and produced the songs, in that sense, he does own the masters or at least some part of it, one would think, right? Irv also went in to say that he, he mentioned that he's never put anybody in a 360 contract. So like all of their show money they get. And what he was saying is like, so if I wrote these songs, I'm supposed to live off these songs too. Like this is how I make my bread. So in some lights it was making sense but Irv really got in his feelings. And I was like, God damn, Irv, like it was looking good. A lot of it was making sense and then it just went bad. It went all the way bad. No, it went terrible, actually. Irv Gotti went to speak on this $300 million deal that was reported that he sold his masters. Now, when he was on Drink Champs, he talked about how he got $100 million for his half of his masters. So he still owns half of it. 
The other 200 million is basically a line of credit for him to make movies and TV shows. Pretty sweet deal if you ask me. So one would think with all these amazing business ventures going on out here, Irv would not be so concerned with the Shanti. But somehow he just kept going back to this hurt. Like this shit was kind of sad. Like I had secondhand embarrassment for the dude. Like it was really bad. But there's a message in here somehow. I believe that. Even as the show ended, Irv was saying how he was over it, but uh, I don't know, I'm calling bullshit, cause bruh, it was a good part of that interview that was all about her. That woman living rent free in that man's head, y'all. But Irv just kept digging into this bag of bitterness and I was already emotionally invested, so I just kept watching. And that's when Irv told Nori how he found out Ashanti was dating Nelly. Mind you, nobody asked, <laughs> nobody asked Irv this. He volunteered this information. Yo, the shit is crazy. Irv said he was sitting at home, claimed he was dolo. He was watching the NBA package or some shit. Paul, son, Paul, son, if that's applicable right there. Anyway, claims he's a sports fan. That's why he's watching it. Apparently there was some commotion on TV and they said, oh, what's all this commotion? And here goes Nelly and Ashanti front row at some game. I think the Bulls were playing this. I don't remember. He said he wasn't hurt, but real ones see through the lies. But it gets worse than that. Irv is claiming that the song Happy that they wrote together or I, I don't even think I even heard the song but he's claiming that that song was they they made it or he came up with it after they were done smashing like Irv where's Dame at Irv being a chatty patty right now y'all no y'all ain't stop him they just said how you at home crying that your side chick chose peace I ain't even gonna hold you that one stung oh man according to Gotti things with Ashanti went awry once the federal indictments came down and the murder Inc offices got raided I was back in 03. Irv claims that Ashanti was terrified that he was going to go to jail, so she wanted out. She ain't want no more to do with Murder, Inc. She ain't want to throw up no signs, none of that. She wanted to be gone. Or he's alleging that's what he thinks that her people was telling her. And to some degree, like, look, if the feds are snooping around here, she's just a singer girl. You want her to stay around and deal with this shit? Like, even you would think, like, yo, just, all right, go ahead. And he said that. He said, you know, he let he let her go. He let Lloyd go. Lloyd only got about five minutes, but he let Lloyd go. But Ashanti, he said he let Ashanti go too, but apparently he couldn't let her go right here where it matters, okay? Honestly, the only thing that I got from this was that Irv want Ashanti to acknowledge that they were a couple and that she loved him. Cause he did say that. He did say that everybody like glossed over it. Cause it is something to gloss over. It's like, dude, that you did all of this for that. You want her to acknowledge. You want that old thing back. But for real, Irv gotta let that, that hurt go because that type of nonsense is gonna tarnish his history. I think Irv doesn't get the props he deserves because of the type of of things that overshadow his like talent. The man, he sold millions of records. He's produced countless hits. I'm talking about hits that still bang today. And let's not forget, he's part of the 2% that went up against the Fed and won. Cause anybody, they, they say that the Fed's got a 98% conviction rate. So when they come for you, that's it. And Irvin, his brother, when the Feds came to raid Murder Inc. in 2003 for whatever they did, y'all go look that up. I ain't speaking on that. They, it was, everybody thought they were done. They really thought they were done for. And like Quiet as Kept, Murder Inc. did kind of dissolve because, you know, that 50 cent shit. But that's a whole nother conversation. We ain't even gonna talk about that. But all in all, he should be treated as hip hop royalty. But instead, he's out here looking like a bitter old man that wants that old thing back. It's just sad, man. I told y'all there's a message in here somewhere. Told you, told you, told you, told you. There is a message in here somewhere. Rinse with Aunt Dammit. Rinse with Aunt Dammit.